cardiac resynchronization therapy is used when there is a weak heart muscle that the bottom chamber of the heart is not squeezing at the same time on all sides. It's like a balloon full of water. If it squeezes first from one side and then the other side squeezes later, the water just wobbles in there and doesn't come out of the mouth enough. Whereas if you put the timing right on both sides of the balloon and squeeze it together, more is going to come out of the mouth even though the same amount of energy is used. So resynchronization establishes the timing of contraction or the squeeze of the heart on, on the two sides of the heart, making it squeeze at the same time, thereby having a higher output. Pictured here is a cardiac resynchronization device that is implanted in the chest of a patient with heart failure. The device is about the size of a cookie and generates electrical impulses that synchronize the heartbeat. The animation shows the top part of the device to which the wires are ultimately connected and, uh, after being inserted into the heart. The anatomical picture here shows the major blood vessels going into the heart. The blue vessels are the veins in which the first wire is being placed into the right ventricle, the lower chamber of the heart. The best location is chosen and the wire is secured in that location. After testing is done, a second wire is introduced into the right atrium of the heart, which is the top chamber seen in the animation. In order to target the best uh, part of the heart on the left side uh, for the resynchronization lead, a catheter is inserted in the coronary sinus vein a balloon is inflated and dye is injected. This dye shown on this x-ray image simulation shows the picture of all the blood vessels on the left side of the heart that can be potentially used to insert the resynchronization lead. After the proper location is chosen, a left ventricular lead is placed through that catheter, which is a small tube allowing position of the lead, and inserted into the target vein. The image here shows the lead being introduced into the distal or most, uh, the furthest part of the vein that provides the best therapy. After this lead is positioned and secured, all the wires are attached to the generator which provide resynchronization and improvement in heart failure symptoms. Cardiac resynchronization therapy, also known as CRT or biventricular pacing, is a new form of therapy for congestive heart failure. In patients with congestive heart failure, the lower heart muscle becomes weak and disorganized. This disorganization, which is also called dyssynchrony, makes the heart pump less efficiently. 
conventional pacemakers pace from only one side of the heart. In CRT pacing, an extra wire is added and pacing occurs on two sides of the heart, which allows the heart to beat more uniformly. This increases its efficiency and improves clinical symptoms in approximately 70% of patients. Traditionally, the patient for CRT is a patient with a weak heart muscle, moderate to severe congestive heart failure, and an electrical delay on electric cardiogram. This delay reflects underlying dyssynchrony or disorganization of the heart muscle. However, ongoing trials are currently looking at patients with less severe congestive heart failure or with no congestive heart failure and without an electrical delay to see if they are candidates for biventricular pacing. Patients may receive a pacemaker-only device to improve their congestive heart failure symptoms. However, many CRT patients have weak heart muscles and are also at risk for sudden cardiac death. In these patients, a CRT device with a built-in defibrillator may provide a life-saving shock in the event of a life-threatening arrhythmia. The patient's cardiac electrophysiologist will make a recommendation for which device is best for an individual patient.